you've basically been building this business alongside academia to try and target what could be a real election risk, but just ongoing risk. Annie, how much do you think that this is currently something we need to be understanding and worrying about in the current context? Yeah. Yeah, I, it's hard to look at the last few years in generative AI and deep fakes and think this is not a risk to us as individuals in terms of fraud, to institutions in terms of fraud, and in terms of de democracies in terms of dis and misinformation. Uh, we are seeing it here in the U.S., we have seen it in Europe, we are seeing it in India, we are seeing it around the world that dis and misinformation is being powered now by the latest trends in deep fakes. And what we are trying to do is think really hard about how we can detect and stop that type of threat vector. Professor Farid, I also want to let our audience know about your role at the University of California, Berkeley, the work you're doing there. But for me, it, it, it's, a, it's a technology story in the sense that you have a new tool to combat an issue. Yeah. And at the same time, the proliferation of, of applications, generative AI applications that create that content yeah. is also on the rise. Yeah. Do you actually just ever phone up some of those companies and say, Let's work together. Yes, in fact, we do. In fact, you can't work in cybersecurity if you're not talking to the other side of the aisle. Right? right? You can't do defense if you don't understand offense. And the good news is, I think that the open AIs and the mid journeys and the stabilities are not bad actors. Um, I think they're generating technology that has good uses and bad uses. So I think they're generally incentivized to work with us to create defenses. We take all the advantage of the technology and we mitigate some of the risks. And we have to do that together. Uh, if we just took the, the presidential election as a case study, how would your platform and technology work if there were a video, a deep fake circulating? Good. So what we want to be able to do is any time an image, an audio, or a video breaks. And you saw that, in fact, at the shooting. which is interesting. Exactly. And you saw it this weekend at the shooting. There was immediately fake images and fake videos coming out, muddying the landscape. So we work with reporters. We work with fact checkers. We work with organizations. We work with campaigns. As soon as something comes out, you send it to us. We run it through a battery of tests, and we, we try to find as much information as we can so that you can make decisions downstream. Talk about that decision that a consumer has right now. Have we all become so numb that, well, yeah. we wonder whether anything is real now? Sure, that's always the fear. So what I like to tell people is what we do at Get Real is necessary but not necessarily sufficient. So the first thing we have to be able to do is tell you what is real and what is fake. There is another battle now that we have to get out of our echo chambers. We have to stop hating the other side of the aisle so much because if we can't hear facts, I don't know how we move forward as a democracy and as a society. I just want to know a bit more about Get Real Labs and how you came to be incubated over the past couple of years with Ballistic Ventures and UC Berkeley under yourself, really, incubating this business. What does it look like now? How many people? Who are you attracting? Right. It's a great question. So first of all, I started working in this field 25 years ago. So this is, for me, is a long academic journey. And about two years ago, I partnered with the folks at Ballistic Ventures. It's Ted Schlein and Roger Thornton. Uh, they incubated us. Our headcount is 30 right now, and we will quickly be 40 to 50 by the end of the year. Uh, we have a product. We are starting to work with customers. And we very much expect to have technology out before the election, per the, the point you were just making, Ed.